Okay, this is the update on the creature mesh construction. <clears throat> so what I have so far is going to body data. I can have these different creature meshes. So here's the snake test mesh, which is just a bunch of balls arranged into a snake. And this one is uh, the same thing but different. Um, the difference is Basically some of the technicals of the file just to make sure it's compatible. But it looks the same. But if it's done like combined naively it'll be all messed up. And then there's the Barrett here. Oop. Wrong one. This is the first mesh I ever showed. You can see I've used the color here to indicate different things about the mesh. I'm now using a different method to do the same thing. And here's the little pangolin guy. And so I have these files in here. <clears throat> and they're identified as these four hex numbers here. So there's 60,000 roundabouts possible creature meshes that can work. And then you can see that these parts, like the head and the ears and the tail, they're different meshes within this one file. And they're identified by like ears.000 for the zeroth variant and then ears. 001 for the once variant, and then it can have 255 variants. And now this one also has a morph. You can see these arms change shape. They don't change shape in the right way. I'm well, well aware of the poor implementation there. But the variant genes can also control where they are in these morph sliders. And so what I have so far is I've made these files and so this is first successful test. She's got the ears of the pangolin and the body of the snake and the arms of the Barrett. So the first successful test of the mesh combination. Uh, so that's the update on that. It's taken a lot longer than I thought it would.